Hello everyone. Here is the lecture 2 on solid electronic materials. In this lecture, we will discuss on four topics. There is kind of field for ignorance of alignments. First of all, we will discuss on effective mass of an electron. It plays a crucial role for, study of, uh, for the study of motion of electron in energy levels. So actually, it is uh, equal to a set of parameters. See, a set of parameters of dimension is equal to the dimension of mass. But since the mass is represented by small m or capital M, okay. But here, since mass, this term, a set of term parameters, okay, is comprised of the physical parameters. Okay, because of this is named as effective mass. Not usual uh, mass. Okay, so let's see the derivation and opt in obtaining of this relation. As we already been discussed, neutronic penny, the motion of electron and periodic potentials on the basis of uh, allowed and energy uh, and uh, forbidden energy bands are obtained and uh, how electrons conduct in those energy levels. Uh, those things have been discussed. In Curly matter model. Now we have to find the relation for effective mass, uh, which is also plays a crucial role to study the conduction of electrons. Let's discuss uh, about that one. Since uh, uh, we already been derived that while talking about uh, a matter wave concept, uh, we know that uh, if electrons are in motion. The Broglie wavelength will be associated, and uh, it has also been uh, discussed in our previous lectures. Uh, instead of a single wave, a group of waves is associated with a particular uh, moving matter, which is called wave packet. And uh, we obtained that uh, the velocity of that wave packet is expressed by this one. Where omega represents to the angular velocity, which is equal to 2 pi nu, k represents to the propagation constant. So, this is the velocity of wave packet, uh, which is associated with the moving electron. So, if E be the energy of electron, then uh, E equal to h nu, or uh, in terms of h bar omega, it is also represented by partial differentiation. We have d equal to h bar d omega. So, d omega equal to uh, h bar will be divided on the left side. So, we have this one. Substitute this value in this equation. At place of d omega, when we substitute this one, okay. So, d upon h bar, d upon h bar is here. We have velocity equal to uh, as a function of energy and propagation constant. So, if electrons uh, are in motion and if uh, an external electric field is applied, which is equal to or shown by small e for a duration dt, then due to this electric field, a force uh, will be realized uh, during this time interval. As a result of, there will be a further displacement that is equal to velocity into dt. There is a displacement and uh, due to electric field a force is realized because of there will be increase in the energy. Okay, a work will be done. So that work will be done is expressed as increase in energy of electron as d equal to force into displacement. Okay. So force means q e or e capital E. So here small e is considered as the electric field. So e small e is a force and displacement velocity into dt is kept here. Okay. Now v, which is already been obtained, that is substituted here. So one by h bar, one by h bar, d upon dk, where dk and dt is kept on the right side. On the left side. 
by dividing pk and multiplying with same can be done yeah. after cancelling we have d so, so d can be written in this manner then it is kept on the right side so d upon dk d upon dk will be cancelled and this dt is shifted to left side then dk upon dt so here epsilon e and h bar is remain so dk upon dt equal to this one now again we know that the force is applied uh, further is displaced means there is acceleration so acceleration equal to dv upon dt and we have v equal to this one so we need to differentiate with, uh, with respect to t so when it is differentiated we will have 1 by h bar d square e upon dk square and uh, dk upon dt so that is written here okay are differentiated with respect to t d square e by dk square and dk upon dt so a equal to this one so dk upon dt has already been obtained epsilon e upon h bar that is kept here epsilon e upon h bar and uh, h bar is already here so h bar square so the place of dk upon dt this one is kept okay it's epsilon e upon h bar as were already there this one so we got acceleration of an electron equal to this one but we know that acceleration is also expressed by force upon mass so here mass is represented as m star okay, which is known as effective mass so by equating these two equations the left hand sides are equal then right hand side will be equal and uh, Small e, uh, small e, and uh, this this energy term, okay, like density of electric field, this e will be cancelled with this one, okay, and uh, we have m star equal to this one. If we find the dimension on the right side, then we have the dimension of mass means kilogram in SI system. So because of this term is known as mass. This term is equal to a set of few other terms. So, a new name is given as a effective mass of an electron. It plays a crucial role to discuss about the distribution of electrons, the variation of uh, energy levels with respect to time, and uh, study other effects. Okay. Next, we will discuss on electrical conduction. And this one we will discuss about the conductance and conductivity. And uh, on the basis of that, how the conductivity of uh, different materials will be varied, that will be seen. Let this is a box of length capital L and cross sectional area is capital This cross sectional area. Okay. And this area is equal to this one. When a potential V is applied, okay. when a DC potential is applied here, plus minus, then current is flown from plus terminal toward the negative terminal, and the here the ammeter is kept from the negative terminal toward the negative terminal. When current is flown, then the needle start to shift on the basis of on the basis of that, it is uh, the current flow. The amount of current flown is noted down. So, if potential is applied, then electric field is produced that is equal to potential upon it total length. As a result of this electric field, the force will be applied on electrons. As a result of that, they start to move. Electrons start to move in this box, uh, solid. As a result of that, Current is flowing. In other words, electrons is in motion. The charge is in charge will be flown, and as a result, current is obtained. That current is equal is expressed by this equation. This Q represents the total charge, and T represents the time. So we obtain current. 
So when potential is applied, electric field is produced and this, uh, it causes to motion of electric, uh, electrons okay, as a result of uh, current is obtained. According to Ohm's law, that current in terms of resistance and potential is expressed by this equation where R represents the resistance is a macroscopic property it is a macroscopic property it depends on the geometric nature of the material geometry means uh, or geometric nature, nature means since R is expressed by or uh, equal to rho L upon A so L and A represents the Symmetry in size of the material. So, R depends on geometry. Where rho represents the resistivity. It doesn't depend on the geometry. So, rho equal to Ra upon L. Unit of this one is ohm. And uh, of this one, ohm is kept here. And meter square. And this is meter. Means ohm meter. Only unit of resistance. The inverse of resistance is called conductance of the material. So by substituting the value of R, okay, see, rho L upon A, we have G. And the inverse of resistivity, 1 by rho, is called conductance. So value of rho is kept here, R A upon L. So the unit of this one, ohm inverse, that is called mo, is also called Simon, capital S, represented by, it. and uh, the unit of this one, mo, meter inverse, or in other words, Simon per meter. So it plays a crucial role to discriminate among materials, as we know. Conductivity for metals is around this one. When talking about the insulator or dielectric, the conductance or uh, sorry, conductivity is equal to this one. And when talking about the semiconductors, the conductivity is in the order of this one. So if we see higher in metals, smaller in insulators, and in between these two values, semiconductors. Are considered. Now again, we will discuss on the conductivity. Conductivity is also obtained in terms of resistance and uh, the dimension of the material. Now, if we have the concentration and mobility, then how conductivity can be discussed? That will be seen and derived here. So let us take the same same material as shown here. Okay length L cross section area A is taken and uh, consider that uh, N be the concentration of free electrons small n concentration means the number of electrons per unit volume is small n since we know that the volume of that block is uh, A into L see the total length total L A cross section area so volume will be A into L Total volume. So n be the constant, uh, number of electrons per unit volume per unit. So we need to find n total volume. So how many electrons are there? So per unit volume small n. So in total volume will be multiplied. So we have the total number of electrons capital N. Number of electrons. By multiplying charge, we have the total charge in that block. Uh, value of n is kept here, so n small uh, small n a l small n a l is kept here. If we have q, then i, the current flown through that material charged by time kept here. Okay, total length and time taken that represents the velocity. Okay, it is shown as a drift velocity. N e a v d. So, if A is divided on the left side, then we have I upon A on the left side and right hand side 
the terms remain are N E V D. N E V D. So I upon I means amount of current flowing through unit cross section A is called current density. So I upon I equal to N E V D. N E V D. J equal to N E V D. We know that I equal to V upon R by following Ohm's law. R equal to rho L upon A. Let's see this one. R equal to rho L upon A. Okay, rho L upon A. So V upon capital L. So V potential. Okay, V upon L. V upon L capital E. V upon L capital E. And one by rho sigma. So I equal to sigma A E. Again A is divided on the left side. So it is. We have I upon A, so that is uh, equal to J, and on the right side we have sigma E. So current density equal to sigma E by following Ohm's law and by following the, the concentration of charge carriers we have J equal to any V D. So by equating J equal to sigma E, J equal to any V D. Okay, we have this equation. Sigma equal to this one. We know that V D upon E, V D represents with a drip velocity upon E equal to mu. Mu is known as mobility. Means velocity gained by charged particle by applying unit electric field. It is called mobility. Its unit is meter square per volt second. So if we have a concentration of charge carriers and their mobility, then conductivity of any material. Can be calculated. Okay. Let's see uh, the effect of impurity, temperature, and light on resistivity. Two materials are taken here: metals and semiconductors. If impurity concentration is increased, okay, resistivity increases in metal. Means by resistivity increases means conductivity reduces. In semiconductors, in this curve, if impurity of concentration is increased or trivalent or pentavalent concentration is increased, then we know that conductivity increases. In other words, resistivity reduces. So it shows that one. And as well as we know that uh, by increasing the temperature, the magnetic charge carriers are increased. As a result, conductivity increased and resistivity reduces. Shown here, and we know that by increase in temperature, the speed of or velocity of the charge carriers, okay, is increased. As a result of that, uh, uh, the, the collision probability is increased, and hence the conductivity reduces, or in other words, resistivity increases. That is shown in this curve. There is no effect of light on the metals since electrons are uh, already in. Uh, in a energy levels where they can move freely, and uh, we're talking about the semiconductors by increasing the light, concentration of magnetic charge carriers is increased. As a result of that, conductivity is increased, and hence resistivity reduces. That is shown. Next, we will talk on uh, drift velocity. If a material is in uh, thermal equilibrium. Uh, which is kept at temperature T, then uh, the kinetic energy is expressed by V by 2 kT, where thermo, uh, Vth represents the thermal velocity of charged particles, uh, can be taken as electrons or any charge carriers. Okay, okay here we can consider as electrons. K represents the Boltzmann constant, which is equal to this one. Okay. So kinetic energy equal to 3 by 2 kT. And uh, electrons are in random motion when uh, they are in thermal equilibrium. See in figure, this figure, they are in random velocity. There is uh, motion in different directions. And if a, a surface layer is drawn okay, perpendicular to the motion of the electrons and uh, in a material, let this is a material which is uh, considered as a box. 
and the surface A is drawn perpendicular to the motion of electrons, then at thermal equilibrium condition, the number of electrons passing through this direction, okay, first arrow represents to the direction, same number of electrons are in motion to the opposite direction at thermal equilibrium condition. As a result of that, the total number of electrons crossing or passing through this surface, vertical surface, in any one direction, this direction or this direction, will be zero. Okay. Since the same number of charge carriers are uh, are in motion in this direction as well as in this direction, so resultant is zero. So if there is no field is applied, electric field is applied, or in, in other words, in absence of electric field, there is no current. So let's see if electric field is applied. Then it is observed that if electric field is applied in this direction, then we know that uh, the force will be applied an opposite to the uh, on uh, on an electron or ele on electrons uh, opposite to the direction of the field E. So in this direction, force will be applied in this direction opposite to the direction of electric field. As a result of that, see. These dark lines are representing to the random velocity in the absence of electric field. These dark lines. But when electric field is applied, then dotted lines. See, the lines are shifted opposite to the electric field. See, little shift is here, little shift is here, and little shift is here. And as a result of that, the final positions of electron is shifted. Opposite to the electric field means there is a displacement opposite to the electric field. Uh, we uh, are in motion in random directions, so we have a resultant displacement of electron. It occurs in all electrons. Okay, resultant displacement, and due to this resultant displacement, okay, or uh, in other words, uh, we have a resultant motion of electrons. Opposite to the electric field, resultant motion or movement of electrons. That movement or resultant motion is called drift, and the velocity is known as drift velocity. And the current produced due to that drift is known as drift current, and the process is known as conduction process. So, in the absence of electric field. Same number of electrons are flowing in this direction and opposite direction. There is no resultant okay motion in a particular direction or flow. Okay, there is no resultant flow in a particular direction. But as soon as electric field is applied in the opposite direction of electric field, there is a resultant displacement in each electron. As a resultant of that, there is a flow of electrons in opposite direction. That flow is called drift. As a result, we have drift velocity. And since charged particles are in motion, because of that, we have a drift current. Okay. Those points are discussed in this slide also. Thank you. Thank you.